With any tackle technique, there is one principle that trumps all others. <laughs> Get off the center line. I can't stress that enough. When someone's charging at you with momentum, get off center. In the case of a tackle, the center line is here. This is our opponent's center line. If I am on this line and he's charging at me, I am going to the ground. I'm either going to get slammed, I'm going to the ground, something's bad going to be, is going to happen. It's no different than if I stand on a railroad track. If I stand on a railroad track and a train is coming at me and it has massive momentum, do I stand there? Do I challenge the momentum of the train? No, you get off the train track. That is the single most important rule in any of these kind of tackle techniques. Get off the railroad tracks. This is the train, get off the line. <laughs> the guy's attacking me, he's charging me. You know, fight stands this way. I can be natural standing. There's different um, ideas on how to initiate this technique. Regardless, he's coming at me. I peel off center this way, okay? All I'm doing is just peeling off center this way. My left foot is peeling off. So notice my pivot point. My weight, 60, 40, boom! And I peel off center line, all right? That's the main gist of this technique. Okay, just so you can see the footwork, I've panned the camera to the ground so you can see my feet. Footwork is very important here. So, there's my center line. That's just drawn on the ground rather than on the guy. Watch my footwork when I peel off center. So I'm going to fight stance right now. Guy's coming in. See how that worked? It's a pivot. <laughs> see that work? What it is is 60-40. I'm not, all my weight's not on this leg. And all my, I'm not 50-50. I'm 60-40. I'm head over knee on the lead leg. Head over knee on the lead leg allows me to pivot with ease. And that gets me into my perfect angle against the tackle. Wham! See that pivot? All right. No, it, there's a lot of schools of thought on how this move starts. You can start from a natural stance, a fight stance, all sorts of different stuff. It, it, regardless of how you start, the principle is the same. You weight shift 64 in your leg, and you go that way. Okay? Uh, whether I'm standing natural, again, 60 the pivot still works. If I'm a, a, a tight silhouette, I'm like, like this, pivot still works, 60-40. So the key is 60-40 weight shift, pivot oh, on that leg to get on this little side, this nice angle against the tackle. I'm going to talk about why that angle is so nice. This footwork, oh, here's the principle. Train's coming, get off the tracks. By getting on this angle, if he gets around my leg, I can control the single leg takedown. If he's a wrapped around my leg, I want to be on this line. I do not want to be here because this is how I go to the ground. If I get off the line of attack on a single leg takedown, I have neutralized his attack. I've neutralized his attack. He will have to adjust. He's unable to get me to the ground this way. Okay? It's an awkward position. It's not something I would choose to be in, but I'm not going to the ground. So again, the center line principle applies not just for the tackle, but the single leg takedown. <laughs> I've talked so far about center line and the importance of getting off center line. That's one of the major principles of fighting. When the train's coming, you get off the train tracks. I've also talked about the footwork. That's also one of the most important things. All the fancy techniques do you no good. They do you no good if you can't control the line and you don't have any footwork. So those are two most important things. Controlling the line and footwork. Okay, two most important things. Okay, so I focus on the movement portion. In summary, that's getting off center and the footwork that supports this. Let's actually focus on the firepower portion now. So, in the Filipino martial arts, there's a principle called D bang the snake. 
What is defang the snake? Focus on the hands. Focus on the hands. Once you destroy and control the hands, the fight's halfway over. Okay, so defang the snake. That comes from Filipino um, uh, weapons fighting, like arts like Kali and Screaming and stuff like that. The principles of weapons-based mindset. But when you apply that to the empty hand, it actually transforms your empty hand fighting as well. When someone's tackling you, their hands are usually out in front of them. Okay, so they're usually charging you like this. Now they could charge you like this, wide. They could come at you like this, like wide. They could come at you like this. But a lot of times with people, they'll come at you and try to grab your legs. And see, when you get grabbing at you, or they're trying to bum rush you, they're on a tackle, they're trying to get you. Notice the hand usually leads. The hand on a tackle usually leads. And we're going to capitalize on that. By simply touching, when someone's charging at you, they can have massive amounts of movement. By simply touching the hand, or touching the arm, or touching one of these depth zones, just by a little bump, you can control them and peel them open. It's absolutely amazing. And there's your move. You can use this hand, which is the left hand, or you can use the right hand and left hand, a double factor. Okay? Use this hand. Or this hand. You practice touching the hand. The amazing thing about the hand is where the hand goes, the body goes. So if I redirect the energy of the hand, it actually redirects the momentum of the body. To the arm. My arm has different depth zones, okay? There's different depth zones. Depth zone one is this wrist pivot point. Depth zone two is this elbow pivot point. Depth zone three is this shoulder pivot point. And these constitute different depth zones. Right? There's seven depth zones in total. I'm not going to get into that. But there's the wrist, the elbow, and the shoulder. When you parry the wrist, it opens up the elbow pivot point. When you parry that, it opens up the shoulder pivot point, which allows you access to the flank. When someone's got full momentum, the power is on the dimension of depth. The dimension of width is actually very weak. The dimension of width is very weak in that case, in that scenario. So we capitalize on the weakness. We get off the center line, which is its strength, and we capitalize, in, which is depth, okay? And then we capitalize on the weak spot, which is the dimension of width, okay? Just touch the hand. Notice I'm varying up the touch. I'm touching it here, and then I'm touching it here. I'm playing with the different depth zones. Depth zone one, depth zone two, depth zone three, depth zone four. <laughs> See, I'm kind of just playing around at those depth zones, okay? Depth zone one. <laughs> I can just do it with one hand. It's just like a scoop. <laughs> See, you just kind of rotate out. Rotate out and hit. Okay. And rather than me hope as a strategy of going and head hunting, which is if I'm checking here and hitting here, and this arm then grabs around me, takes me to the ground, and gets me locked up, and then I'm all into all sorts of what-if situations. If I touch the hand and get out here, I'm now in the flank area. So he can't get, get to me without some kind of major maneuver adjustment. He'll actually go running right past me and has to re-pivot and re-engage. There's some double factoring there. I'm actually scooping. Just like I would, in a, just like I'm um, at a Filipino martial arts with knife, knife See that? Right there. So, moral of the story. Get off the line. Use the footwork I showed you. Don't head hunt. Don't head hunt. Again, as hope is a strategy. Conversely, defang the snake. And then hit him in the head. Because whether this succeeds or fails, it's absolutely not that important. At that point, if we get him, great. But we're not going to the ground. 